Now, before the exercise uh, program, I want you to take your club, get your left hand on it, let your right hand hang at your side, and we're going to look at the. I want you to look up at the club face and notice that every time you change your stance width, watch what happens to the club face. Your left hand and wrist have to be totally relaxed. So go ahead and change your club face or change your uh, stance width if you would, Justin. And what do we have here? It's that closing a little bit, isn't it? You feel it? Okay, let's narrow up a little bit. Where would we go? Open? Pretty square, maybe a hair open. Okay, and let's uh, narrow it a little more then. Open it up? Just we're, a little. Yeah. So we're seeing changes in the club face angle. Uh, with an open core, you're not only dealing with hips that are rotated left, having to adjust your stance width, but you're also dealing with changes in club face angle. Okay, and go ahead. Okay, Justin, now we're going to recheck his grip. Uh, and now that he has a square hip line, and we're going to look and see what effect it has on club face. So we have square hips. And Justin, I want you, uh, how's that look to you? Pretty square? Yeah. Okay, let's change your stance width. We can go a little bit narrower, and that club face isn't moving, is it? That's very square. Let's go wide again. And once again, that's staying very square. So not only are you squaring your hips, you're impacting the club face angle. Now that uh, your hip line is square, as a result of the exercise program, we want to look at alignment. As I said earlier, there are three things that are going to impact your setup. One is your hip rotation as a result of imbalance in the core muscles of your body. The next is alignment, and the last one we'll talk about is grip. So for alignment, we're looking at two parallel lines. This bar to that line, this, this white line is your target line going to that yellow flag. Your stance line should be parallel there as well. The only way to be able to check your alignment is if your core is square. Justin, if you'd step in again. We have Justin's uh, hip line square so he can set up to a square stance. So now we're able to check Justin's stance line, hip line. Uh, Justin, pull your uh, right foot back. Let's just pull it back one inch. Most players set up a little bit closed with their alignment. Let's see what this does, okay? Now ground the club. This is called crossing lines. Justin's hips and shoulders are now going right. You'll notice how everything moved together. If his, uh, in his normal setup, being that far right, ball position would tend to get a little forward. Go ahead and just address that ball, Justin. So you can see his hips go back, his shoulders go left, his hips go right. We call this crossing lines. Now, Justin, please go back to square. So your alignment is going to impact these lines pretty dramatically. That, once again, Justin's square, that looks absolutely perfect. Now, Justin, if you'd pull your left foot back two inches. So if Justin's alignment got a little bit open and ground the club, and you can see how now his lines cross behind. His shoulders cross his hips behind. Hips are open. Shoulders look pretty parallel to the target line. But it's going to impact path. It's going to impact his ability to rotate. Impacts his entire golf swing. So alignment, once you have a square core, your alignment is very, very important. Okay, go back to square for me, Justin. I'm going to show you something, a bit of a teaser now. Justin, what I want you to do is change the um, change your right hand so it's much more on top. Justin's now going to change his grip and go ahead and address. And now you can see that everything turned left. So what's happened is his right knee flex increased, his hips rotated left and his shoulders went on the same line. Now come back to neutral grip with that right hand. The subtleties of grip, your grip is also going to change your hip line, which is actually our next installment in this series. We're back to square. Now, Justin, I want you to rotate your left hand this way, more on top that way. There you go. So changing his left hand, 
Now you can see his hips rotate. His left knee flex just increased. His hips rotated to the right, and his shoulders are starting to move on that same line. You feel parallel, but yeah, those lines, everything now is parallel, but to the right. All right, let's uh, take this off. We're gonna have Justin take the club to the top of the backswing from first from a square stance position. And Justin, please do that. And hold it. How's that feel? Good. Good, okay, now bring that down. And now we're gonna have you pull that right foot back a couple of inches. And watch the change in path, watch the change in the amount of rotation. And what do you feel there? I feel like I turned it too inside and I got stuck a little, can't turn. You can't turn and you feel like the club path changed a little? Yeah, definitely inside and across the line a little. Inside and across the line, okay. And bring that right foot back up. And let's have you pull that left foot back two inches. And now take it to the top of the, hips are now open, take it to the top of the backswing. What do you feel there? I feel like my hands came high and I kind of moved laterally. Yeah. So you get stuck as, when the, when the hips stop, the arms and the hands begin to work. Um, so for Justin and for me, when, our, when we get a little open in the backswing, we can only turn our shoulders 90 degrees to our hip line. And once the shoulders reach that point, the arms and hands tend to work straight up. You feel that? Yeah. A little steeper? Want to do one more good one? Yeah, go ahead and take it to the top. Let's see what a good motion looks like in the backswing now. Great position. There you go. Beautiful position in the backswing. So just because you square your hip line doesn't mean you're going to swing the club like Justin does, but it's certainly going to take a number of variables out of your setup. <laughs> but you do this exercise every day, right? Well, yeah, I have to. You know, if I don't, I practice is, you know, is useless. Basically, I'm out practicing what I don't want to achieve, and it doesn't get me anywhere if I'm not practicing, you know, the right thing. Right. Well, uh, and you told me earlier that you do this exercise depending on your workout regimen both morning and night. Well, I always do it when I wake up in the morning. Then if I also exercise at night, usually a treadmill or, you know, any type of weight lifting, I'll do it right yeah. after too. Okay. And that is so important. Anything that you do that will challenge your core will change your hip rotation. Uh, a lot of my players say, well, I'll do it before I play golf. It's easiest if you can get into a habit doing it daily. It's great for your back. It's wonderful for golf. As I said, uh, now you can work on one line, a square hip line. You're not gonna find a lot of changes in the club phase simply because you're changing stance width. And you're not gonna to have to be constantly making adjustments in your stance line, uh, as you saw earlier, for both me and Justin.